Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. So recently I held a poll in my YouTube community tab and about what videos you guys want to see. And there was a big portion that wanted some guides, which is not just very interesting, but also it brings me back to the very roots of my YouTube channel. I started with doing a lot of guides and I think one of the first guides was an ammunition guide so here we are and we are kind of updating this years later because a lot of things have changed ever since and yeah I think we have to talk a lot even about the basics so without further ado let's go in so the basic question is not what does every individual shell type do but what shell type to use and that is an even more interesting question because it depends on every single tank but i just want to cover the basics and how you can learn within war thunder yourself and there are quite a lot of features that i just want to cover at the start before we actually go to the uh individual tank shell types so let's just start that you can look into the armor view and uh, you can also play around with showing external armor you for example the um, side skirts if there are any or a first layer armor uh, or the um, tank tracks they disappear etc and then you have something like a protection analysis and now something very interesting comes you can you can look at every single branch you can look at uh, aviation army helicopters sadly not ships uh, you can use uh, the various different nations and their ranks and tiers and also the shell type and there you can see what uh, every single shell you want to use so let's for example use here um, the heat round and uh, then we really look at where the tank is and we go and just shoot at it and we can see the shell flies and it doesn't go through but when we go to another place um, it actually might pan and we can see just like in the hit cam what the shell does it's not 1000% accurate but it gives you a good idea further if you are tired of clicking on everything you just look at the tank and then you go to protection map and then it calculates where the shell penetrates now a little spoiler here um, this is also then sometimes a bit misleading so you should play around with it a little bit but then it only shows you um, the area where you can penetrate with the various different shell types again we come to this later from that angle that you looked at so if you um, change the angle it's not accurate anymore and you have to click on it again and then it updates so um, the next thing is uh, that is a cool feature another cool feature is if you are new to war thunder um, you don't have that many tanks and maybe you want to play a bit around get some experience learn for yourself there is one great tool you for example can test drive every premium tank or even the stuff that is sold on the marketplace that you don't have and you go and go to a test drive where you then can um, load the ammunition as you desire and then you also set to realistic battles arcade or a simulator yeah, and uh, change some other parameters and then just let's click on it you can also try out certain other things and we might have a revisit of the test drive in just a bit if it just loads because this is the other PC and there you can then shoot at uh, the various different uh, tanks and do your thing we this is a really cool feature and so you can try uh, things out from angles distance etc and the tanks after a while actually reappear so that is a very good update on the test drive I gotta give gotcha in that but yeah here is the t-34 1942 which covers a lot of low tier ammunitions because if we go into the ammo it has a lot of them the first thing is that if you look at this a stat card appears and also a little animation pops up that basically covers everything that the shells do and you then can try this out further in a test drive and understand the basics this is how you basically learn things in War Thunder. You also can watch a lot of guides on YouTube, just like you're doing right now, by the way. Um, so yeah, you already started learning. <laughs> and um, 
Let's start here already with this ammunition type. It's the BR-350A with the MD-5 fuse. Then there are a lot of numbers, but basically the most important thing that you need to know about the shell type is it's some sort of APAG, armor piercing high explosive. It penetrates the armor if it has the necessary, necessary penetration power and then goes into the tank and explodes inside, sending shrapnels everywhere and basically not just damaging modules, but most importantly, what gives you the sweet, sweet one-shot kills in War Thunder, giving you the one-shots. <laughs> and uh, that is by killing the crew, most likely, if you hit the crew compartment. So just penetrating a tank somewhere um, is just not doing damage like in a more arcadey game like World of Tanks. That is basically what makes War Thunder unique. There are very different names to... Um, APHE shell types. It can be even described as AP, APC, APBC, APCBC, or in this case, APHEBC round. And there are two different ones. And there is one thing that I really need to point out. There is not that much drastic difference between those two shells, but the BR350B MD8 is a bit more desirable because it has more pen and while it has roughly 50 percent less tnt equivalent explosive mass that is still more than enough to kill the enemy and further also the fuse delay is a bit longer so it doesn't explode right after penetrating the armor which depending on exactly where you hit uh, might be a disadvantage for the md5 fuse this is the most widely used shell and the most beloved shell in the game, period. It's the killer shell in War Thunder, right at the start. Everything else is nice to have, useful in special situations, but it's all about APHE from low tier to mid tier. And this shell type can even one shot when you hit a main battle tank from the side, uh, the most modern Abrams or Russian main battle tank. It doesn't really matter. It just goes into the crew compartment through the side, explodes and just kills everything. End of discussion. This is the to go shell in War Thunder. APHE meta it is. It still is and it always has been. And that is the great thing about War Thunder or what people really hate. What you like or not is up to you. Let's continue. Then there is AP. The same thing basically, but it doesn't have a high explosive bursting charge. So the shell just penetrates and then keeps on going. There is a small cone of shrapnels and if the shell directly hits something, it then does more damage than an individual shrapnel from an APHE shell, but very often you miss vital parts or you need a second shot, but it's not impossible to kill something outright. And there is one scenario where AP has an advantage over APAG, and that is if you are behind an enemy tank and you hit the hull from the rear, and if you have enough penetration power, you go through the rear armor, the engine, transmission, whatever, and still can reach the crew compartment where with normal APHE shells, the shell would go off in the engine, but the crew is still not that. That is probably the only time that AP has a decisive advantage. Uh, other than this, it can have a little bit more penetration. And that brings us then to APCR and that just to make a long story short, is probably the worst shell type in War Thunder and it is universally hated and tanks that have this as stock shell are absolute um, the thing that causes the most tears in War Thunder, period. APCR has the advantage of having a rather high muscle velocity, but then it performs really poorly versus sloped armor. It performs also really poorly in the aspect of the post penetration damage effect because the post penetration damage is even worse than the AP by quite a bit actually. And um, it is just only useful on special tanks like the Chumbo, you know, where the armor is strong but the gun is rather weak and you meet a lot of tanks that have thick uh, thick um, not angled front plate and then it can be useful but 
not really desirable. And also the penetration falls off considerable at range, which brings us to a shell that couldn't be different if it tried, and that's the heat round. Um, it has a low mass velocity, so it has a f high arc. And then it also doesn't matter how far the target is away. If you hit it, you have the maximum penetration power because the mechanic, which is very interesting, and I don't want to go into too much detail, causes the penetration being irrele irrelevant from the mass velocity. It just needs to hit the target. So it is high explosive anti-tank rounds. It's the same uh, principle as in most ATGMs to foreshadow high tiers and also some RPGs if in infantry would be a thing in War Thunder. And uh, it also has an explosive TNT equivalent bursting mass which is quite respectable. If you hit something lightly protected it also has the effect of a of an high explosive round which is good. So um, at lower tiers, there is not too much to say about heat. We come back to this later on. Then we have the high explosive shell, and that's just a shell with a big bursting charge, um, much more than the uh, AP, HE rounds. Um, in this case, less than the heat round. And so when you have the heat round, there is not that much reason to use the HE round. But one nice side effect that we will see later on, and um, you know, is oh, especially useful with high caliber guns with howitzers in particular a kv2 sturm sturmpanzer etc um, there is so much tnt in them that the armor that you hit doesn't need to be penetrated because it also can splash down as you can see in the animation right now it doesn't pen the armor but it can splash down and therefore penetrate the tank and uh, cause overpressure, which is a different killing mechanic in War Thunder. Then we have a very special shell and that's the shrapnel round which is again rather rare and a Russian thing only almost and uh, the penetration isn't that great while it might be cool for trolling it's not really that useful and APHG just does a better job or you take the heat round. Shrapnel is not really that useful. Then we have the smoke rounds and there are three sources of smoke smoke launchers which are mostly welded to the turret then you have also the engine exhaust system uh, which comes in at higher tiers where where you have your engine produce smoke and then you have smoke rounds and they might be the most useful of the ones or the most versatile ones you can smoke up yourself you can smoke up uh, allies which are a bit further away out of reach of your smoke launchers and you also can smoke up enemy sniping positions which greatly annoys them and then you can in theory pass over open ground to reach another hiding spot and in theory it's also possible to shoot down planes if you hit them because there is a small bursting charge and also if you hit something very lightly protected like a, a half track or a, a wheel tank with very thin armor or an open top tank and you just lob it in from a higher position you still can shrapnel the crew a bit but it's mostly the smoking uh, aspect that makes the smoke shell useful so this is already all the majority of ammunition in war thunder explained however when the tiers progress you find yourself at different battle ratings you come across other tanks and for example here with the americans we have the m4 a3 105 and if you go into a test drive with this thing you can see that it has basically also a smoke shell uh, heat rounds and also a high explosive round but this is a high a rather high caliber uh, he round and um, i think if i'm not mistaken it was around the 600 meter mark where it does this yes um so it causes overpressure if it hits the deck of an enemy tank and so um if you would hit the front plate nothing would happen so let's continue to some other tanks and let's just look at their ammunition and um, yeah we then basically want to look at a tank that uh, uh, yeah let's look at the m60 that comes in handy and this is then where uh, high tier tanks begin to evolve um, and this is basically what nowadays is mid tiers you have a very widely um, used gun that is the western 105 millimeter 
gun. In this case, it's the M68. The British basically have the L6, um, L70, no, L7, sorry about this. And uh, you have then APDS, which is basically like APCR, only in relevant and useful. So that is significantly better versus uh, sloped armor, better than AP rounds actually. And they also come in with a very high mass velocity and have considerable better uh, post penetration damage effect. And it got um, actually buffed a while ago, so it's actually not pure pain to use them. Um, and APDS, we come to in a bit, it's actually not bad. Then we come to a different form of the high explosive round, and that is the hash high explosive squash head and it basically works like a he round only that it just splashes basically on the armor and then detonates and as you can see it has considerable higher penetration than any sort of high explosive round and this is because uh, it uses the armor against itself however it has its limitations when it hits um, spaced armor and when it hits also era or nearer we come to those uh, armor things in a bit but basically they absorb the high explosive squash head effect so the shrapnel comes from the armor itself it's really cool look it up how it works and it was quite powerful for a while and then we come to again heat in this case heat fs now the fs doesn't really do anything with how it works it just helps with being um more accurate at longer ranges with higher mass velocity and this is where we reach up to 400 millimeters of penetration and now we have to talk about how armor works against hash heat and also he and that is a lot of tanks can have era protection explosive reactive armor it's basically a a high explosive charge on top of the armor and it really disturbs how those ammunition types work and basically neutralize it and then there is also spaced armor which are two platings so the chemical energy based weaponry he hash and heat just detonate on the first plate and then the second plate catches all the shrapnels which it wouldn't do just like that versus AP or APDS rounds. So there we have it. Um, there is one final thing that I want to say about HE, HESH and HEAT and that is that those shell types can prematurely detonate also on bushes, fences, trees and you can't shoot through walls. So there is that. Then we come to yeah, the tank that I just eliminated out of my lineup, and that was the MBT-70. And that tank has also another shell type, and that is an ATGM. Now here is to know, it's basically a heat round, but guided. So let's just have a look at this, how this looks in the test drive, and you can then basically see what's the matter. Um, yeah, I just loaded the wrong shell type, but we still can do it. So what you need to know is, in this special case, the tank gets a reload penalty from using uh, an ATGM. It's instead of 7.5 seconds, 11 seconds. And uh, this is basically what it does. So, yeah, you can uh, shoot it. It penetrates the armor because it has very high penetration power. And uh, it also does this versus tanks with considerable steel armor, which are mostly immune versus uh, APHE and such. Goes like a hot knife through butter, more or less just like that. But there is a catch to it. Uh, I'm blind. <laughs> and that is, as you can see, here is also a tank with uh, both composite armor covered with ERA. It gets absorbed with the first layer, but the ERA then only works once but still the um, composite armor below that is also pretty good versus this despite the high penetration this is the magic of top tier and um, i leave this for you to figure out and basically there is only one shell type left and um, yeah there is just one thing to know 
a top tier heat rounds are considered to be then really weak whereas with the m60 a much lower it is the king of shell types and that has to do with then the um anti anti chemical energy based weaponry armor becoming more popular and more widely used at top tier so this is basically the stock round 480 millimeters are actually not that great at top tier and then we have a speciality of the heat defense round and that is this one with lower pen but it has a proxy fuse and so you can also shoot down planes and helicopters which it with it which is pretty cool and um, then we come to then the king of top tier shells and it is AP FSDS rounds. It's again just like APCR and I know a lot of people will cringe at this but this is the TLDR. It is like APCR and like APDS but an in even more useful. Look at the muscle velocity nearly 1700 meters per second. Very easy to use it and you have very high penetration and something called a uh, positive um, penetration coefficient versus sloped armor. So at 60 degrees angles of attack, a heat round has exactly half the penetration value in the stat card as at uh, zero degrees angles of attack. It's something to do with mathematics because it basically pens in a straight line. And whereas this one also can pen a bit more uh, line of sight thickness, so to speak, um, versus a solid steel block. Interesting to read it up and now one of the strongest shells in the game is the M829A2 with 629 millimeters of penetration and I think the strongest shell type is on the Leopard 2A6 currently the DM53. But there are certain other factors that then really make the difference at top tier and that is that technology also gets involved whereas before that you basically shot and observed the fall of shot adjusted for it then got experienced and also the close quarters maps didn't make it really that difficult to hit targets in the first place at top tier certain things can help you first of all a laser rangefinder which allows you not to just range find the target much quicker as world war ii laser rangefinders it has a far far further range up to 10 kilometers and it automatically adjusts the gun sight to that distance. It's literally point and click, which a lot of people apparently find really fancy and awesome. And on top of this, you also have night vision devices. In this case, it is thermal imaging. And how that looks, how all this looks on top tier tanks, we shall quickly just look at here in a test drive and um, yeah that is that okay and I hope you enjoy so with the first round I hope I have the right one loaded yeah you can see uh, it actually explode when coming close to it and we get a hit But the bursting charge isn't that great. Ah yeah, machine guns are also a thing. If you hit. So, this is where I'm really terrible. And you also can range find planes. And I really overrest this uh, muscle velocity. Yeah, so uh, better luck next time. But it still works di in direct fire versus tanks. It just has less penetration. So that was a little bit of a fail. Now let's try out AP FSDS, shall we? And let's try out this range finding thing. And we can see, works like a charm. The post penetration damage effect is rather narrow compared to other stuff but it's still there and it even goes through a lot of composite armor this is then where top tier gets also in that aspect and you really have to distinguish between ap fsds and the various different kinds of armor and then also it works at very very heavily angled armor just like that 
that was still considered to be a side shot. And I think that this just demonstrates how top tier is played. To uh, point and click. Now, if you, for example, have invested in a good gaming PC and finally you're coming to top tier and you unlock thermal imaging, uh, you will kick yourself because this is how top tier actually looks in modern combat in War Thunder. It's a pixel party if you don't have uh, third generation thermal imaging, which is a rather rare thing. Those pesky planes are a real annoyance. So this is obviously not covering SPA, this is not covering um, IFVs, etc. Ah, nearly hit him. But it just should give you a good overlook over what's going on. Ah, missed. I leave it to you to do better and I hope that I covered the basics. It's you have to look at the stat card, you have to look at the tank's armor and where you can pen it and you also have to uh, test this for yourself in the test drive which is useful. A lot of those features were not available when I did my first ammunition basic guide and if you want to see some more special cases when I actually shoot tanks more often then it is up to you or how you kill a tank properly, um, when to switch ammo types etc. This is just a problem because there are literally hundreds of tanks in the game. There are, as you could see, a lot of ammunition types. There are various different kinds of armor. And to just put this into a 10 minute video is always quite the challenge. So this video was probably a bit longer, but still it was only a basic guide. I could literally talk for hours. If you have still a lot of questions, if you have some suggestions how to make this better, then put this into the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, if you found it helpful, then why not give this video a like? For you, it's just a click. For me, it means the world. Also subscribe and uh, hit the bell if you want to see more. And as usual, we will see each other on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.